Hello everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I am Shad, software engineer at AppScot. Uh, today our webinar topic is Redis Sentinel Ops Request Day to Life Cycle Management for Redis Sentinel using TV. I will be uh, giving a brief description about Redis Sentinel mode and then I will show a live demo. So in, in the meantime, you can ask question in the chat. I will try to answer and I, uh, I am looking for your feedback as well. So let's get started. So uh, first I will describe how Redis Sentinel works and then I will uh, go to the, show you some ops request QDB supports about Redis Sentinel. So uh, I will show you how to scale horizontally your database and Sentinel instances. And then uh, I'll show reconfigure TLS ops request. Then I will show how you can replace Sentinel in your cluster. And after that, we will have a QA session. So, uh, how Redis Sentinel works. So in uh, Redis is an in-memory database, which is uh, usually used for caching. And uh, Sentinel is a Redis mode where Redis provides high availability. And in the Sentinel mode, there are two types of instance, instances. So Redis instances, which fold your data, and there are some additional Sentinel node. They don't fold data, they just monitor the cluster. And Sentinel always check master and slave instance, instance and check if they are working as expected. If master is in down state or, or uh, slave is in down state, uh, Sentinel picks up that. And uh, when master goes down, Sentinel uh, tries to uh, replace that master with a slave node. So it will uh, start a failover configuration. And here you can see that all the sentinels always try to monitor the master node and slave node. And the application client usually uh, try to connect with sentinel to get the information about the uh, cluster. Because um, when you do a write operation, you will do that in the master node. And when you do read, you can do that in master or slave. So first application client asks the sentinel that which one, which node is the current master. Then uh, after that, it, to, it uh, forwards the um, request in the right place. Then here you can see this in this configuration, quorum is two. So that means that uh, at least two of the Sentinel needs to agree about uh, a master down state. So uh, let's say if uh, master have connection with one Sentinel, that connection is down for some reason, but uh, that Sentinel thinks that master is down, but other Sentinel can ping the master. So in that case, uh, the Sentinels will not start a failover because uh, at least for in this configuration, at least two Sentinel needs to agree about uh, master down. Then it will start the failover uh, operation. So uh, let's uh, get started uh, about the live demo. So I, I, here you can see the installation process of KubeDB and you can uh, visit our website kubedb.com or export.com to learn more. I have already installed uh, KubeDB in my workspace. Uh, so let's dive in. <coughs> so uh, here in, in, it is my workspace. So here you can see the first, uh, I will uh, I'll deploy a Sentinel cluster. Uh, in the YAML, you can see the client is Redis Sentinel and the name of the cluster is Sentinel. And uh, I am using Redis version 6.2.5. I want uh, three replicas of the Sentinel. And uh, for uh, disable all these are uh, true here. And uh, here you can see in the pod template, the CPU and memory limits. And in the storage, you can see the storage class is standard. I am using kind cluster. So uh, it is the default for the kind cluster. And termination policy is set to wipe out, uh, which wipes out the, all the TPC and data when you delete the database. For your data safety, you can uh, use other termination policy. So let's deploy the Sentinel. So here you can see uh, Sentinel is in provisioning state. So as uh, I have, you have seen that in the YAML, there are three Sentinel instances. So the uh, QDB operator will uh, create the Sentinel instances. So let's check the QDB operator. So here you can see I have QDB provisioner and QDB ops manager uh, running state in my machine. So three ports have created and it is in the provisioning. So it will be ready in a minute. So what happens is uh, Sentinel monitors Redis. So in high availability mode, 
you, you need to first deploy the Sentinel and then you need to deploy the Redis so that uh, the Redis can be monitored from the start. So uh, to deploy, deploy Redis before you, uh, you need to have this Sentinel in Redis state. And in the uh, Redis EML, you can see that we have reference that Sentinel database. So the namespace is demo and name is Sentinel. So this Sentinel will start monitoring these Redis objects. So uh, the EML is the same as the previous one, version is 6.2.5, and I want uh, also three replicas for my database, and uh, other fields are same as the previous. So uh, let's deploy the Redis instance. Okay, so the Redis database is deployed and uh, it will also have the three ports. So let's meanwhile, let's just uh, check the logs of the Sentinel. So, so here you can see the Sentinels are starting to monitor the database, Redis database. So it is uh, in this, so it has identified a slave node. Let's wait for a few minutes to a uh, few moments for this database to become ready. So uh, meanwhile, let's uh, see the log of uh, the Redis object. Yeah, so this Redis object is ready. Okay, now let's just exit into one of the uh, Sentinel port. Okay, so let us uh, exit into Redis port. Okay, so uh, now let's move on. So uh, here you can see uh, this Redis instance and after that I have uh, horizontal scaling. So you can horizontal scale the uh, Sentinel instance and as well as Redis instance. So you can apply a YAML and in this you can see there's uh, the API version is ops.qpb.com slash view and alpha one and time is Redis ops request for the Redis instance. And uh, in the metadata section, the name is scale down and namespace is demo. And in the spec, type is horizontal scaling and database reference. Yeah, we want to uh, keep this database reference. We will uh, scale down this database and we will have two replicas after the ops request. So let's apply. Okay, so here you can see currently this database have three instances. Now after this obstacle, this uh, database will have two instances. Uh, and if uh, when you scale down, if the, the third port is master, then we will first start a failover operation. And after that failover operation, uh, we will uh, the master will be another node, and then we will remove a slave node because we cannot remove the master. So if the last node is uh, master, we will change it, and uh, other one will no other node will become master, and then we'll remove that node. Okay, so you can see that the Redis pod is uh, deleted and obstacle is successful. So now let's uh, let's uh, see that other horizontal scaling. So here you can see the kind is Redis Sentinel obstacles. And we will scale up this Sentinel. And in the spec, you can see the type is horizontal scaling and uh, database reference is uh, Sentinel. And we want four replicas. So let's apply. Okay, so uh, you can see these another of triggers has created here. So it is in progressing step. So uh, this is, uh, we have added a new Sentinel instance and it is, it also starts monitoring the previous DB object. Okay. <clears throat> so um, let's move on. 
after that uh, we have uh, replace sentinel ops request so uh, in in this ops request you can uh, replace this replace sentinel instance and apply another instance yeah, apply another instance sentinel instance and replace the previous one so when let's say you need uh, you have uh, one sentinel and it is monitoring more than let's say four or five redis cluster but uh, for some moment you are separating the clusters so you need a uh, new sentinel which has less uh, resource which use less resource and or uh, yes uh, so less resource then you want to replace that sentinel so you can create a new sentinel and replace the old sentinel with the new one so it, it is the new sentinel uh, yaml so uh, the client is ready sentinel and the name is new sentinel here we are using version 7.0.4 and we will create this db in uh, in test namespace and we are using less resource than the previous one so we are using uh, 50 MB memory and 50 MB CPU. So let's deploy this YAML. Okay, so you can see a new Sentinel is being created in the test namespace. <coughs> let's wait a few moments. So uh, we have, we have uh, three ports in the the, the ports are running and the, the DB will be uh, in running state in a few moments. Okay, so it is in the ready state. So before uh, applying a replace sentinel uh, of triggers, we need to have the new DB in the ready state. So let's see the uh, replace sentinel of triggers YML. So here, uh, kind is ready subs request and uh, the type is replace sentinel. So uh, we are giving the database reference. So the database reference is ready. So we will replace sentinel for this database. And in the sentinel section, we have reference of the new sentinel. So uh, we need to give the reference to the new sentinel. So the new sentinel name is new sentinel and namespace is test. And uh, the last thing here is remove unused sentinel. Key, which is said to true. So what it does is when you have uh, only one sentinel and for monitoring that database, so when you replace sentinel, you don't need to have the old sentinel anymore because uh, that sentinel is not monitoring any database. So this just removes that sentinel object. So let's apply it. Okay, so a obstacles is created with the Sentinel and uh, it is in processing state. So it will uh, create a, it will replace this, uh, this Sentinel will start follow, following the database. Okay, let's wait a few moments for this to be successful. Okay, now uh, 
So let's verify that the Sentinel has been replaced. As you can see, the uh, old Sentinel is deleted. So let's see if it is replaced. Okay. So you can see the connector slave is one and role is master. And so the port one is master. So let's see if uh, the new Sentinel is uh, verifying this, uh, following this. Okay, let's take back into Sentinel instance. Okay, and uh, the name is new Sentinel. Okay, so let's connect to the Sentinel port. So if you can see the master is ready zero. So it is following this master and number of slaves is one. So there is only one slave and uh, number of other Sentinel is two. So there are three Sentinels. So total, uh, they are following these ready instances. Okay, so let's uh, put some data in the Redis DB. So now let's have the our next obstacle, which is add TLS. So to add TLS uh, in in Redis configuration, when you have Sentinel and Redis, you need to have uh, TLS enabled for both of them. So a Sentinel instance that have TLS could monitor the only Redis instance that also have TLS. So either both Redis and Sentinel will have TLS or none will have TLS. So when we replace Sentinel, so uh, here you, you can see this Redis does not have TLS enabled and this Sentinel does not have TLS enabled. So why do you want to add TLS to this Redis? We need to have Sentinel which also have TLS. So currently this Sentinel does not have TLS. So we need to replace this Sentinel with a new Sentinel object that we have TLS enabled and that will start following this Redis instance. And after that, uh, similar to the replace Sentinel obstacles, we will remove this uh, if it is uh, it, it does not follow any other uh, Sentinel instance. So to um, add TLS, first we created a secret with TLS SART and TLS key. And after that, uh, you need to create a cluster issuer. Uh, so uh, you can use issuer when your DB and Sentinel have been uh, decided in same namespace. But when uh, your DB object is being one namespace and Sentinel is another namespace, you need to switch by cluster issuer. So uh, I have already created a cluster issuer. Let's get the cluster issuer. Yeah, so uh, here is the cluster issuer. It is a Redis C issuer, and we need to specify it in the issuer reference. So <laughs> here you can see uh, we are adding Redis TLS, a TLS in the Redis object. So database reference is Redis. And uh, in the TLS section, we have to refer the new Sentinel. So the new Sentinel is Sentinel TLS and namespace is TLS. So you can see in the test namespace, there is no uh, Sentinel name that uh, Sentinel TLS. So when you specify a Sentinel name and namespace, but there is no Sentinel in the namespace, we kubedb operator will create a Sentinel in that namespace uh, using the same issuer wrap as this one and the, these certificates. So uh, here issuer reference is cluster, kind is cluster issuer and name is Redis C issuer. So uh, let's apply the YAML. Okay, uh, so you can see these new Sentinel TLS pod they are uh, creating. So a new DB object. So uh, the new DB object is Sentinel TLS. It is in provisioning state. So when it becomes ready, it will start following this Redis object, and the old Sentinel will again be removed because uh, we have specified here remove and use Sentinel is true. So which means that the old Sentinel, which is uh, which will be unused after the replacement and then it will be removed. 
But uh, if there are another database that the Sentinel is following, then the Sentinel will not be removed. Okay, so uh, this DB object is ready, and uh, now it is starting following this uh, this object, and it is also restarting because we are uh, adding TLS to this uh, Redis DB, so the ports are restarting with the new TLS configurations. Let's wait a few more moments for this uh, to be successful. Okay, so one port has been restarted and uh, another port is restarting. So uh, when we restart the DB object, uh, there is a master slave configuration. So we first uh, restart the slave nodes and after that we uh, restart the master node. So the master node is also has been restarted. It is in running state. Yes, so you can see that uh, reconfigured TLS obstacles is successful and the old Sentinel which does, did not have TLS is removed. So now let's exit into this Sentinel and check that if uh, if it is if it follows the Redis object. So minus space is test and uh, port name is Sentinel plus zero. Okay. So so now let's uh, we should connect with the certificates. Otherwise we cannot connect. Let's try. Yeah, so we cannot connect without the certificates. So let's provide the certificates. Okay, so so let's try to connect with the Redis object. Check that is the it is TLS enabled. We can uh, connect with the TLS certificates. So let's try to connect without the certificates. So let's try to get the data. Yeah, we cannot get the data. Okay. So let's see the logs of the Sentinel. Okay. Okay. So uh, this Sentinel is uh, following. We cannot connect to the this Sentinel currently. It will be uh, connected because the DB object is ready. So uh, this Sentinel is now currently following these Redis objects, and uh, you can uh, the, you can you have seen that uh, I have connected with the Redis object using TLS and uh, extracted the data. So the TLS code. Okay. So. Uh, so uh, with that, I have uh, demonstrated the TLS object, TLS obstacles and uh, deep the Sentinel obstacles. So now uh, in the future work, uh, we will do backup and restore to the Redis cluster and we will keep supporting the new versions and we will do the first performance improvement. And with that, uh, do you have any questions?